graduate scheme. So prior to that, I was a peer fellow, transdisciplinary innovation program that's in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. So I was there till September mid, and then I joined Crawford's. So yeah, today I'm going to talk about from being a visual designer to how I you know, deviated myself, or trying to deviate myself towards user-centered design. So yeah. Now, my works always revolved around visuals, be it illustrations, be it icons, be it character designing or something sort of, any kind of visual elements because I really believe that one user experience that get enhanced far more if you get the you know, right elements in some way. Okay, so suppose you are getting a button, suppose you are getting an icon. So if you can place it really, like you don't need one word to support your element. So you can you know, use one element or illustration so I can, and anybody can you know, see and understand what it is all about. Suppose you were designing for semi-literate or illiterate people because they don't know anything about how English is working or how what exactly it means. So if you work for the elements, they can really understand what is it is all about. Suppose you are talking about uh, uh, you have to make sure that, okay, uh, something, like, okay, you have to wash your dishes. So, you can show some dishes all over, but it doesn't actually mean what action they have to take. So, if you show a tap of water which is flowing, something right there, so you can actually make them understand what action they have to take forward. So, yeah. Why the drift towards user-centered design? So, before a few months, I was working on some personal projects and I really felt the enthralling need of research and iterations into my works because only with my skills and whatever talent you can say in visual design, it was not the, you know, I wasn't ha having the capability to understand the user needs or how can I proceed towards the exact research work or how can I proceed towards the problem solving positions and all these things. So, yeah, so I was really, you know, I was having a mind blockage in terms of, uh, because I, I, I couldn't, I wasn't able to give my 100% into my works. So I thought of, you know, talking to people. How can I solve this problem? Like, I want to really get my 100% done. Okay, if it is my personal project, I really want to see how it is going to be and how I can really solve the problem because I really want to see some, to, to generate some, social impact towards my, you know, uh, towards, how can I say, like through my projects or something. So, read, like, read a lot before starting a project. Research, like go to your users and talk about your problem, like what problem they are facing also. And uh, get to know what they're facing, how can it be solved, because they, they sometimes they also talk about, okay, if we used to get that things, if we can get these things done, it can be solved some way or the other. And make prototypes, make several prototypes, get to like get it to them. So you, you can iterate them again and you can actually solve the problem by seven to eight iterations or whatever you can you can flow forward to. So what is the point of pursuing design and transdisciplinary innovation if it is not for a grand vision? So design is a tangible tool, right? So it is not only for your self gain. <coughs> you are doing it for some people. If it is not solving any problem for any people, it is of not use, not of any use actually. So, instead, <coughs> sorry. So, design that is ideal, design that is noble, and the selfless art that is hoped to achieve in this brief life. So, I'm trying to achieve this thing. So, there is a great opportunity to solve and to bring design in everyday life to underprivileged children who actually think that art or design and innovation can't be their part of their life because it is expensive, right? So if we can bring towards like some kind of institutions like art or design which brings innovation towards it, so we can actually solve many problems towards because, you know, there are many people who think that we can't actually achieve it. So, after a few months of, of completing my graduation, I graduated last year, so I started working in an NGO called Happy Horizons Trust. I don't know if you've heard about it or not. So they work for public or government school upliftment in rural uh, India. So the thing is that, 
states like Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, and India has the maximum rates of school dropouts. After having like several visits to those places and uh, researches about the same, I ended through issues which were which they were facing. So one is a lack of enthusiasm in the school premises. Like it can come from the teachers and it can come from uh, any sort of basic facilities. Uh, rather, there are no basic facilities because they don't have a proper school bag also or desk also to read or write or whatever it is. So for any kind of engaging activity, you need to have some basic facilities over there. Like in India, over 60% of the rural areas are you know, under poverty line and they don't have the uh, uh, ability to go to, you know, they don't have the limelight to get into the electricity or something. So, So, uh, I made several posters about this biased education system because what you happen to see in the rural areas is like in one family, one guy is going to the school, but the sister or somebody is not able to go to the school. So, there are some basic things which is happening over the over the issue something. So, uh, and about this basic facilities, so I tried to imply my design skills into a solar empowered school bag. So it is uh, which will enable children to keep their books and other necessary stationaries into it and would also work as the light source for homeworks or other useful, useful things which then uh, which needs light source in the evening. So uh, like I had to make sure that the bag has to look like a school bag and actually it doesn't the solar panels should be seamless so that they can use it. So it is still in the prototyping phase and uh, like you know Dragon Chronicle featured over this thing uh, uh, almost a year back or something. So after that uh, I got awarded a 100% scholarship to be a tech fellow at the Hebrew University to work with like-minded people where you can work with futurists, entrepreneur and big data visionaries or something sort of that. So. I was there for three months and uh, uh, we actually worked towards some projects. So that my project was Meet Israel. So it is uh, a real-time uh, travel experience application. Like suppose you are going to a historic places or something and you don't know exactly what are the hidden gems are because even Tripodo or some other uh, big uh, travel apps can't get through what exactly the hidden gems in that places are. So, yeah, actually with this thing, you can get to know like what, uh, it, it will be a real-time GPS system, so you can actually get through uh, which place you are exactly out at, and you can create your profile and it will be like a photo generated experiences. So you will click photos and you can, you know, create, uh, create a caption towards it or like some sort of uh, this thing. And actually you can make sure where, which place you are into and you can share it with the people, whatever in the whole world. So, I embrace the idea that the act of designing is a unique way of knowing about the world in a different way. And we should learn to design in an open-ended way that we can lead to discover and innovation. So with a grounding in design research and media theory and design research explanation, so we can actually get through so many people engaging activities also. Because I believe in people create better things together. I don't know why it is not coming totally, I, but it is the word people can create better things together. So maybe, yeah, let's collaborate and produce things which people actually need. Thank you.